Okay, so these days basically everyone knows how important and relevant Fight Club is. Whether it's materialism, nihilism, repressing our true selves or our masculinity crisis, it has everything. However, after not having seen the movie for a few years, I thought that with all the new life experience that I've gained, this movie might give me some insights I was too immature to pick up the last time. However, it actually kind of broke me. And don't get me wrong, I also got a little bit of the things I was looking for. I mean, the whole movie is full of scenes like this. But little did I know that I would get hit with, I don't even know if it was an existential crisis, but it was pretty wild. In my eyes, for a lot of the problems that are depicted in the movie, there aren't really concrete answers which left me pretty pessimistic about the future. Since I think that most solutions it provides are either outdated or just not applicable. The first and most important one is our finances, job, purpose, whatever you want to call it. Especially with the rise of AI that will make so many jobs obsolete, it's really concerning because then instead of bashing the 9 to 5 concept, saying corporations evil and calling it rock bottom as Fight Club does, having a job that doesn't make you fulfilled will be something that is absolutely worth striving for. I mean, there are so many many other factors like house prices increasing at a scary rate and probably the most important one which is the lack of purpose and having nothing to work towards. Because even if we totally hate our jobs, having a deep profound reason to continue doing it is what keeps most people going. In most cases it would be providing for your family or trying to save enough money to start your own business. However considering our social situation like romantic relationships and the decline of families and birth rates or our economic situation with the recession and an inflation that might escalate even more in the foreseeable future which makes starting a new business extremely difficult or maybe even impossible. Second point that Fight Club criticizes is our complete lack of deep human connections and relationships. And yeah, things are also worse than ever in this regard. Loneliness and isolation have never been this severe. Whether it's romantic relationships or just regular friends, it's quite brutal. And if you consider yourself a lone Sigma wolf, I mean, please stop coping, you're most likely lonely and isolated. Hustle culture is another reason why meaningful connections aren't as valued anymore, which also goes hand in hand with the lone Sigma wolf mentality. I mean, I would also consider myself someone who loves being by himself for longer periods of time. However, every now and then everyone needs these deep connections, it's in our nature to be social. And the last point is not that severe, however there I have to go on a little rant since I'll talk about individualism and how even though the Fight Club members escaped their dull mundane lives, they still were like sheep following Tyler, dressing, behaving and talking exactly like him. They were like Neanderthals as if they didn't have a brain. It's the same thing with especially young men copying everything their masculinity guru tells them and therefore also don't have any kind of unique personality to them anymore. For instance, it's so crazy to see 12 year olds talking about matrix attacks of female nature and I usually don't like it when any type of media criticizes something but doesn't provide a better alternative to this problem. The Oscar winning movie Parasite for instance criticized capitalism in a very artistic way. But do you have a better alternative Bong Yong hoo With no answers to this question, these movies seem kinda pointless to me. And I think there are two or three possible ways to approach our situation. However, I also have no idea which one is the best and we'll look at how Fight Club wants us to handle it. Anyway, so kings and queens, let's get started. Okay, let's go. Okay, so in the beginning of the movie, we have the typical criticism of dull mundane cooperation work that isn't fulfilling and drains our happiness and life energy and money is worthless and just paper and all that shit. And yeah, sure, everyone would like to have work that they enjoy doing. You know, maybe my expectations aren't high enough, but I think that this is a f***ing lot to ask for. And I mean, it's called work for a reason. However, the key point is that nowadays it seems to be more like we only work to keep ourselves alive. And I think that this might be the real problem and not just cooperation's bad. Even if you hadn't had any high ambitions and goals that would fill you with excitement enjoy back then. You still would have had a great motivation to do whatever it is that you did. But again, due to various factors like the crazy living costs and isolation, many young people don't have these reasons anymore. And what I didn't like is the movie says that we work to buy ourselves shit we don't need. Of course we don't need every piece of IKEA furniture or any other useless things. I mean these days it would be things like iPhones even though there are way less expensive phones that are probably just as good in terms of performance and it's only about status and showing off. And don't get me wrong, of course that's incredibly stupid but this is not the reason why we go to work. We all have rent to pay and we all need food, where should we get this from if not from working? I mean, do they grow from trees? The vast majority of our income goes into necessary things and especially housing and food, the two most important things that you can buy with money, have gotten way more expensive these last years. I also didn't like how they romanticized Tyler's abandoned home. First of all, these days the shithole would probably still eat up more than half of our incomes and second of all, it seems extremely unsafe. What if criminals just break in and stab you? I just think that most people nowadays don't give a shit about materialism but just earn enough so that they can sustain themselves. And I mean, it's always easy to say cooperation's bad, but I mean, what's the alternative? Well, start a business. Okay, what do you suggest? I've recently seen a very interesting yet worrying video about this topic called The Age of Making Money is Over, The Middle Class is Done, from an amazing YouTuber called Techly. I feel there's a certain disillusionment among people who think that all you need is hustle, willpower, mindset, determination, perseverance, and there's so much self-help improvement advice out there where people say to work harder. Work, work on what? 
Work harder at what? Please check out his channel, I highly recommend it. And the most infuriating fact is, it's not even our fault. Look at what really happened during the economic crisis in 2009 or all the money printing countries. Over 40% of all US dollars have been printed in 2020 and 2021. That's pure insanity, just think about that, it's, it's unbelievable. So honestly, in my opinion, the only business model that seems to be worth striving for, if you can even call that business model, seems to be gaining popularity through social media, gaining revenue from these websites, through sponsorships and maybe selling your own products like video courses, books or whatever. And yes, since most people also see it this way, it's extremely oversaturated. Anything else, especially real physical businesses, honestly don't really seem to be worth it anymore. In Germany, where I'm from, especially with the COVID measures and now with the Ukraine war, there are so many middle class businesses like restaurants, clothing stores or bakeries going bankrupt. That's one reason why I just don't like Fight Club's take on this. Again, what's the alternative? Honestly, I can go on for hours about how screwed we are. For instance, our demographics. I mean, who's gonna pay our pensions? These people? Or how the biggest corporations monopolize everything which makes it even harder to start your own business but i think that's enough I think Fight Club depicts our current state of human relationships pretty accurately. Right in the beginning we already see the narrator being deprived from any form of deep connections. Again for the lone sigma was among us, please hear me out. The ironic thing is that most of the reasons for our loneliness epidemic haven't even been invented when the book and movie were made, so the situation has gotten a lot worse since then. When the narrator was talking to Marla in the beginning, they both bond over the fact that nobody seems to listen anymore, but just wait for their turn to talk again. Dale Carnegie has also addressed this in his book How to Win Friends and Influence People. Most of his lessons suggest to let the other person talk and make them feel good about themselves and especially speak about the things that the other person is really interested in because this will make them like you and find sympathetic which also reinforces this point and sure i totally understand if that makes us think that everyone is extremely egotistical self-centered and let's be honest some people are retarded and this was in 1996 when the book was released and now it's not just that this problem is still present but we have so much more things going on that negatively impact our situation the most important one probably being the fact that most people just don't go out anymore. And I'm not talking about nightclubs, but regular things like, I don't know, going to the cinema when you can just stream everything from home, which most of the time is also cheaper. Nowadays, a lot of the reasons for going outside have an online alternative. And the problem is that we don't even find the time to really feel our isolation since we are constantly bombarded with seemingly limitless distractions. We have Twitch streamers that might give you the feeling that they're hanging out with you, but they don't even know you and only answer your questions if you donate money to them. I've also found podcasts to be quite similar in this regard. You have highly successful people talking to each other about topics that you also find interesting. I also get the feeling that I'm a part of this conversation, but it's just like the streamers, they don't even know that I exist. And don't get me wrong, I don't want to criticize podcasts, I think that they provide a lot of value, but I'm just saying that this can also easily be distracting from the fact that we should go outside more often and have real human interactions. And sure, you could say that playing a few rounds of Fortnite with the homies is basically the same, I mean, maybe it is, but I highly doubt that. You can't really concentrate on important and deep topics when you're shooting others at the same time. Without these coping mechanisms, the pain that comes from isolation and loneliness would probably make us immediately get off our ass and find friends again. And this can also be quite the endeavor if you look at our demographics again. It's actually quite concerning to think how this will look in let's say 10 or 20 years. I work at a grocery store besides my studies twice a week and I was always thinking why the hell do mostly old people come here? But now it all makes sense. There are literally almost only old people out there. And there was only friendships. When we look at romantic relationships it's even wilder. Most reasons are the same like staying at home too much and having too much entertainment. However there are a few more things like watching that will drain every desire out of of your soul and the insanely high expectations for one's partner through only seeing highly successful and beautiful people 24 7 on the internet which goes for both parties men and women so in summary we not only oftentimes don't have enough money to pay for our living costs but also struggle a lot to find a partner to start a family with which both would be the most profound reasons to go through a job that we don't like and i'm not here complaining about everything like a crybaby i truly believe into taking full responsibility however at first we need to look at the facts in order to develop a strategy in our case the facts are quite negative but it is what it is. Okay, and now before we come to the solution, I'll talk about the least important point, but it kinda ties into the whole relationship dynamic. And it's also pretty funny, and this video is already negative enough. I think Tyler Durden and everyone who joined Fight Club is the perfect representation of our current masculinity influencer situation. At first, everyone who joined Fight Club seemed like finally being free from the daily cycle of repressing one's true self and being a 9 to 5 super slave and all that. However, as the movie continues, all of them more and more become mindless followers. Even the narrator also just seemed like an unpopular boy who somehow made friends with the most popular one and tried to copy everything about him. And I know that he literally is Tyler, but you know what I mean. But at least towards the end he broke the cycle and saw how crazy 
everything was. And considering that he suffered from severe insomnia and was basically a schizophrenic, he still was the only one who saw through that. But the other members, oh man. Again, at first it seemed like they all finally found themselves again after all these years. But what do they do after their discovery? They just follow another leader and do everything he tells them to do without using their own head. They all shave their head and they all behave the same. How is that different from everyone dressing the same when going to work as often criticized about cooperation jobs? And this is the same thing with masculinity influences. And of course, to a certain degree, there are habits that basically everyone needs to follow in order to live a happy life like exercising, eating well, avoiding the instant gratification activities or at least drastically limit them, or facing our fears. There's basically no way around these things. But now we come to the point where it gets problematic in my opinion. It's not like they copy the things that would help them from their mentors or role models, which is of course perfectly fine and I mean that's what they're here for. You want a body like follow his training routine. You want the wisdom of a Jordan Peterson? Then read the books he recommends. But especially with all the masculinity gurus, I have a feeling that it's not just the healthy and reasonable side of it, but we're at a point where they feel like clones so that they now have even less of a personality than before their self-improvement journey. For instance, the only two pieces of content I've seen from Andrew Tate was his interview with Pierce Morgan and the other interview when he got released from prison. Oh yeah, and this guy also. <laughs> Dude, that's so hilarious. So I almost know nothing about him, but as I've said in the intro, having 12-year-olds talking about major attacks is just beyond me. Don't get me wrong, I also think that there is some terrifying things going on with certain situations, institutions, corporations and especially this gentleman right here. So if we penetrate the cabinets which I assume are probably referred to as Matrix. However, what would 12-year-olds understand about any of that? And they copy every single thought and position their leader takes and don't use their head even for a single second. It's literally a cult, which is the exact same sheep mentality that was criticized by the movie in the beginning. For anyways, the solution to this is actually quite simple. As Bruce Lee once said, reject what is useless, absorb what is useful, and add what is essentially your own. And I think that a lot of people missed the last part. Okay, but enough criticism. Now let's see what we can really do about all this mess. In the end of Tagli's video, he talks about whether we should just stop trying since our economic and social problems will only get worse and worse. I mean, the middle class is already basically gone. And instead, spend time with our loved ones and do the things that we love, like enjoying art, playing video games or whatever. And this comes from a guy who worked at Google and Facebook, who's a self-made millionaire and is also all for productivity, achieving your goals and all that. You know, having a 9 to 5 job where the environment is cool, you like your colleagues, your boss is cool, and then just do whatever you want after that. I mean, that seems kinda nice. And of course, most men would like to to be independent and not to work for someone else, including myself. But yeah, there's just a lot of factors like inflation and the recession that makes things very difficult nowadays. And of course, no one expects it to be easy, but I think you know what I mean. But there are also more than that. The movie also tells us the importance of feeling alive by going through discomfort, let it be fighting or other things like lifting weights, cold showers, facing our fears or whatever. And while these things will absolutely have a positive impact on us, I'm not quite sure how this will help us with these big questions. Do you think a cold shower or boxing will solve the global recession or just not spending money on things we don't need. Dude, how about the majority of people don't even have these problems because they don't have any money left to spend it on unnecessary things? And of course, the majority of people watching this video, including myself, live in a first world country, so our living standards are extremely high compared to the rest of the world. So I'm really grateful, but we still have to look at the facts that this might not be the case in a few years anymore. Anyways, let's start with the communication and friendship problem. But I would say that even though it's harder these days, I mean, that should really not be that big of a problem if you're being honest. Basically, everything needed for it deep connection is absolutely in our power. Not spending too much time on your phone, PC or gaming console, being able to have genuine and deep conversations, being a cool person with its own views and interests, basically everything that you would also want in a friend or romantic partner can be easily gained, whether it's by reading books and implementing their lessons, listening to different podcasts to find out where your interests truly are, start to lift weights and so on. However, the money thing is really something I just don't know what to do. On the one hand, it would absolutely make sense to just get a regular job and do the work that is demanded of you. And afterwards, you basically just do the things that make you happy. This way there's way more time for friends, family, romance and your hobbies. For instance, every time I learn a new song on the guitar, even though it brings me a lot of joy, there's this constant thought in my head that it's a waste of time and it doesn't bring me closer to my goals. And we would also have significantly less stress because we won't have as much responsibility anymore. All that sounds very enticing. But on the other hand, we have the escape the 9 to 5 red race path, which is basically only possible through your own business, which would speak against the previous point. But on the other hand, Fight Club suggests to enjoy 
life and not take it too seriously. But I don't really think that you can have both. I mean, maybe for a very small minority like musicians or Twitch streamers or something. Or maybe they also work all the time, I don't really know. But when building a business, I don't really think there is much time left for personal pleasure. And there you also can't just do whatever you want because you'll have employers who rely on you. So yeah, despite the pleasure path sounding really enticing, I still think that this one might be better, even if we'll never make it. Because every time you look in the mirror, you'd be filled with pride because you're trying everything that is in your power despite the odds being against you. Imagine being at your deathbed and regretting to have never tried whatever it is that you wanted to do. I think this might be one of the most devastating feelings one could have. But on the other hand, you could also argue that you will smile because you think of all the fond memories you've gained throughout your life after your 9 to 5. And honestly, I think that many of us would love to just hustle and make our dreams come true. However, the main question is, will all the effort even make a difference? Of course, there's never been certainty regarding these things, but especially these days, it seems less and less likely, with again the economic situation and also everything being oversaturated already. But we could also get hit by a bus tomorrow, everything is meaningless and we should just try to get the most joy out of life as we can with our loved ones. Again, I'm quite torn apart because, yeah, maybe we're really all screwed and Putin pushes on a red button tomorrow and we're all gonna die and then we would really regret to not have enjoyed life more. I've stopped following the news because I think we're all ruled by evil lunatics, but I mean you still come across certain topics. And every time I hear some news about the Ukraine war, for instance, I just think, dude, why even bother? I should just go out, enjoy life, watch movies, play games, date girls and do whatever makes me happy since I might die in a few years if the war continues anyways. And even though I was aware of most of these points, for some reason after watching Fight Club, I started to question my entire life's choices. I suppose it's due to the fact that the movie addressed all these necessary topics but didn't give a proper solution to that in my eyes. Anyways, especially for this video, I would really love to hear your opinion on that because again, I'm really not sure if it's not just a better idea to just throw everything out the window, do as little work as possible and enjoy life as much and as long as we can. Anyways, kings and queens, thank you so much for watching the video.